We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Gimel Amid Beis and Masachas Sota. This is Sota Daf Forty Three B. The Gemara in the previous summit, the Brisa said that if you have a situation of a person who stole a house, so in such a situation he's not going to be exempt from the war. And so the Gemara said that does not seem to be the Brisa does not seem to be like Rav Yosi Aglili because Rav Yosi Aglili says that if a person is afraid may averus should be yado, if a person did sins and he's afraid of the consequences of those averus, so then he is exempt from the war. Rashi says may averus should be yado this person should be considered he's afraid he's afraid of the Averus because he stole this house and so therefore he shouldn't be exempt but the Brisa said that if a person stole, stole the house he's not exempt from going to war and the Gemara answers you could even say the Brisa is following Rabbi Yossi Aglili the Brisa is talking about a situation where the person initially stole the house but then he did Teshuva and he actually paid money for the house so he actually bought the house he bought it properly therefore it's not considered in Avera, and the point of the Brisa is to say that he's not exempt in terms of getting this new house. But the Gemara asks, if so, but he should be like a regular purchaser. And he should return from the war. He should be exempt from the war because he bought the house. He should be considered like he bought a house like any other typical situation and he should be exempt. And the Gemara explains, no, since originally when he got the house, he got it and he had stolen the house even though later he paid for it. So he's not exempt. He does not return from the war. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, If somebody plants a vineyard, Tanu Rabbon and the rabbis taught, Asher Natat says that he planted, I only know if he planted it. If he purchased it, if he inherited it, if he received it as a gift, Minayin, from where do we know that that also, that person is also exempt. Talmud Lomar, the Pasuk says, Umiho Isha Sharnata Kerem. Again, it says, Umiho Isha Sharnata Kerem. That's an inclusion, and it includes these cases as well. Ainli Ela Kerem, I only know if it's a vineyard. Minayin, Larabos, Chamisha, Yilane, Michael. How do we know to include, let's say, it's five trees that produce food? Be'afilo Mishar, meaning, and even if it's from various species. Talmud Lomar, Asher Nata, the Pasuk says, Asher Nata, and that includes those cases as well. Yachol Shanimar, Bahanotea, Arbo, Yilane, Michael, I might think to include even if it's just four trees that produce food or even if it's five trees that don't produce food. Talmud Lomar Karim, the Pasuk says Karim, and that limits it, and that says that these cases are not included. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov Omer, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says, Kerem kemashmo. When it says Kerem, we have to understand that in the traditional sense, that it means a vineyard. Lochilal now, it could have said Lochilal, but instead it says Velochilalo, it says Velochilalo, so Prat, so that's also an exclusion that exclu- excludes the following cases, Lamavrech Ulamarkiv, let's say the person doesn't plant it, but he layers the branch or he grafts it, in those situations it will not be included. And the Gemara says, tanan, but didn't we learn in our Mishnah, it doesn't matter if you plant the vineyard, it doesn't matter if he layers, the, layers it, it doesn't matter if he grafts it, all these cases are included, and the person is exempt from the war. And the Gemara answers to that, Amr Rabbi Zeirah, Rabbi Zeirah says, Amr Rabbi Chista, that Rabbi Chista says, Lokash, it's not difficult, Kan Bar Chavas Iser, Kan Bar Chavas Hatter. It depends if we're talking about a graft that was done in a prohibited fashion, that's excluded in that situation, he's not going to be exempt, but if he does a graft that is mutter, so then that is an exemption. And Rashi explains, Talmud Lomer, the Pasuk says, Asher nata midelok siv, asher kerem nata, drosh beinami nata mikol makam, so we understand anything that he planted. Ve'afilu eno kerem, even if it's not a vineyard of grapes, sharei lo hizker kerem adai, and it hasn't yet mentioned the word kerem. Talmud Lomer kerem, but it does say kerem, the dummy le kerem, at least it has to be similar to a vineyard. Upachos shabikramim chamisha gefanim heim, the smallest of the vineyards are going to have five of the vines. Kerem kemashmo, the other opinion was, no, it only has to be Rabbi Leizer Ben Yaakov said it, says it has to be Kerem, as that's traditionally understood, meaning Velosha Ilanus, it does not include other trees. And then Chililo, it said Chililo, it could have said Chilel, so Mashma Miyuto la Zevlo la Acher, so that sounds like some kind of an, of an exclusion. As we said, it excludes Mavrich and Markiv. And the Gemara then said, Kan Barkovas Isser. In one case, we're talking about Harkovas Isser, that's what's excluded. Brisa Barkovas Isser, Min Bishain Omino, when the Brisa excludes a situation of, of, Mer- of Markiv, that's talking about when the person grabs in a fashion that is Osir. He does one species with another species. That's already an exclusion. That's like what we excluded before. It said, by a house that excluded someone who's a robber. So too, over here, we're excluding a Harkavas Isser. Mavrich, what does it mean to be layering? It's the person takes like the vine and he bends it into the earth and he grows the tree in that fashion. 
And Rashi continues, Markiv grafting Shinoke Vailan, that means he puts a hole in the tree, Vinotul Min Arach Shiva Anfeilan, then he takes from some of the soft branches, Vitokhev Lasoch, and he puts it into the hole, Viosa Onaf Bisochanek, if he creates this branch in the hole, Vinosa Mi Min Oso Ilan Shinotul Mi Menu, and then it's able to, to give from the species of the tree which he took from. Viestral Mutter Laharchiv, and Yisrael is allowed to graft Mishnei Lonos, let's say you have two trees, Shazepe Ros of Gasin, Vizepe Ros of Dakin, let's say one has larger fruits and one has smaller fruits, you're allowed to graft in that situation to have a min achod zebaza. That's a situation of one species, and that's going to be permitted. In that case there will be an exemption from the war. And the Gemara continues, Hi Harkovas Heter, this case of Harkovas Heter, the case where you're grafting in a permissible fashion, where we're saying the person is in fact exempt from the war. Hechi dummy, what exactly is the case? Ilema Yalda Bialda, if you're going to say that you took a young tree and you grafted it onto a young tree. So typically, Deboy Mahadr Mishum Yalda Rishona, so in that case, the person gets to return from the war, he, ex- he should be exempt from the war from that first young tree. What does he even need the situation of grafting for at all? Eli Yalda Bizakena, so rather what you'll say is the case of the permitted grafting is when he takes a young tree and he grafts it onto an old tree. But that wouldn't be an exemption. Vamar Rabbi Avo, but Rabbi Avo said, Yalda Shesivcha Bizakena, if a person takes a young tree and grafts it onto an older tree, so butla yolda bizikena. So the fact that it's young is actually nullified, and it's now considered to be an older tree. Vein but in Arlen, there is no law of Arlen, therefore you wouldn't be exempt in such a situation from the war. And so the Gemara says, Amr Rabbi Yirmiyah, Rabbi Yirmiyah says, Liolam Yalda Bialda. The case actually is it's a young tree that he grafts onto a young tree. And then the question was, why wasn't he already exempt because of the first young tree? Because the cases he planted the first one, it was for the purpose of it being a fence or for the use of, of the wood for beams. The Tanan, as we learned in a Mishnah, Hanotea Lesiagu Lakoros, if somebody plants for the purpose of a fence or for the purpose of beams, Patermina Arla. So in that situation, he's exempt from Arla. But the Gemara says, Umaishna Yalda Bizikena de Butla, Umaishna Yalda Bialda de Lo Butla. But still, what's the difference that if he grafts a young tree onto an older tree, so then we say it's nullified, it's no longer considered a young tree, it's considered old, it's not Chayiv and Arla, and therefore he's not exempt from the war. But what's, what's the difference by this case, where it's a young tree with a young tree that that primary, that first young tree, is also exempt from Arla because it was it was done for a fence, or it was done for beams, but there we're saying that the uh, the branch that you're grafting on is not exempt from Arla. So why are we treating those two cases differently? It's identical. In both cases, you're, dra- you're, you're grafting from a young tree onto a tree that's exempt from Arla, whether that tree is an older tree or whether that tree is exempt from Arla because it was planted for a fence or for the beams. And the Gemara says, no, there is a difference. Hasam over there, Let's say he changes his mind. There's no way to change your mind by an older tree and then get to return from the war, be exempt. You can't change its status and make it chayiv in Arla in such a situation. If he would change his mind, it would never be, it would never come to a situation where he's able to return from the war. But Hacha over here by the younger tree, let's say he originally planted it for the beams or for the fence, he mimlach he changes his mind and then says he wants to use the tree for the fruits, so bas mahadri, so in that situation, it actually would allow him to return from the war, and therefore there's a possibility with this tree that it's chayv in Arla, and when you graft onto this tree, so then the person will be exempt to hamei kar because originally this tree really is something that can be for fruits, midi dahavi a'olu me'ilei, and this would be similar to a case where a tree grew on its own. In a case where a tree grew on its own, it also can be chayiv in Arla. The Tanan, as we learned in the Mishnah, olu me'ilei, and if it grew on its own, chayiv in Arla. There's a chayiv of Arla. But the Gemara continues, v'lukma bekerem shel shnei shutfin. So why don't we say the following? In the case of the grafting, where we're saying it's a permissible kind of grafting and it exempts you, maybe the case is a, is a situation where the vineyard is owned by partners. The high hadra adidei, the high hadra adidei, and the idea is that when you graft, so then each one will, will return for his own tree, so to speak. But the Gemara says to that, Amar Papa Rapapa says, Zos Omeris, this this shows kerem shel shnei shutfin ein chozer nalov me'archei melchama that if you have a vineyard that belongs to partners. That actually does not allow a person to return from the war. That does not create an exemption, and that's why we can't be speaking about such a situation. But the Gemara says, But what's the difference between this case and a case of five brothers, and one of them dies in war? So we know there's going to be Yibam with one of the five brothers. They're all sort of partners in this Yibam. And the halacha over there is the Kul and Chosen that they all return from the war. And the Gemara says to that, Hasam over there, Kalchad Vechad Karina Be'ishto, each one, so it's called his wife. 
wife. But hacha over here, when you're talking about a vineyard that's owned in partnership, kolchad v'chad, lo karina be karmu. Each individual is not calling it his vineyard, it's a partnership, and therefore, there is no exemption. And Rashi explains, v'lukma v'kerem shel shnei shutvin, why don't we say we're talking about a vineyard of partners, lama li la'adure yashinuya d'chika, why do we have to resort to these forced answers, benotea l'siog, l'chorus, that we're talking about cases of planting for a fence, or for the beams, lukma benotea l'achilo, let's say we're talking about a situation where the person planted for the purpose of eating the fruits, with and you're saying, well, the person should have been exempt because of that first tree that was planted. Why don't we simply say the case is that the original young tree belonged to Ruvain, and now Shimon comes along and he grafts onto it. He wants the fruits from the graft to belong to him. And so now there's a partnership over here, so there's an additional exemption that's being created. And the Gemara ultimately answered that in a situation of partnership, that does not create an exemption. But the Gemara says, In the case of the five brothers, is a b'raisa later on, It's a case where she's awaiting Yibam with all of them. And the Gemara says, no, because there, Karina Be'ishto, there, eventually, it's going to be his wife, Shemel Azetas Yavin. Maybe the Yibam will be with each individual, with each brother. Each brother can say, the Yibam might be with me. But over here, Kol Chad V'Chad, Lo Karina Be'Karmu. Each individual is not going to call it his vineyard, HaMiyuchad Lo. It's not designated for him. She'ein Lach Ba Gefen, She'ein L'Shnaim Chelek. But you don't have over here a vine, where you don't have a partnership that's, that's concerning this particular vine. And therefore, over here, there is no exemption. And the Gemara continues, and again, the Gemara had asked on our Mishnah that it says in our Mishnah that if a person grafts or if a person layers branches to create a tree, so that also creates the exemption from going to war. And the question was that if the person is grafting or if the person is layering onto a host tree and the host tree itself is a young tree, so the person should already be exempt because of the host tree. And so the Gemara now offers another answer. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Gomer, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, Bimavrich Elon Biyerik, what we're talking about over here is the person is layering the tree onto Yerik, onto a vegetable, and the Yerik is not enough to create the exemption from the war. And that's why it has to be the Mavrich Elon, the person is layering or grafting the tree onto the Yerik. And that's what the Mishnah means when that creates the exemption. And the Gemara continues, and the Mishnah would follow the Tana of the following Brisa, because we said above that the Mishnah has to be talking about a kind of grafting that is permissible, and so maybe one would say that if a person is Mavrich Elon Biyerik, so that's not really permissible, because that's one species with another species. And so the Gemara says, no, there is a Tana that says it's permitted. Again, the Tanya, as we learned in a Brai, Saha Mavrich Elon Biyerik, if somebody, if somebody layers a tree onto a Yerik, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Matur, Mishum Rabbi Yehuda, Ben Gamda Ishkfarako. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says that's mutter in the name of Rabbi Yudah Ben Gamda Ishkfarako. And so again, our mission is going to follow that Tana. The Chachamim Osrin and the Chachamim, they're the ones, they say it's prohibited. Our Mishnah would not follow the Chachamim, because again, our Mishnah is talking about a situation of Mavrich Elon Biyarek. And the Gemara continues, Ki Yasser Avdimi Yomar Rabbi Yochanan, when Avdimi came, he said that Rabbi Yochanan said, and this is going back on the Brisa, again, the Brisa had a, the Brisa said that in a situation of Mavrich or Markiv, it's not going to create an exemption. And then we asked a contradiction from our Mishnah, and we said, well, the Mishnah is talking about a situation where you're doing the Harkava in a way that's Mutter, and the Brisa is talking about a situation where you're doing the Harkava in a way that's Osir. And so now the Gemara is giving another answer. Hamani Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, he, the author of that line in the Brisa, it actually wasn't the Tanakama. That was a continuation of the words of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. And Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov actually would disagree with our Mishnah. Our Mishnah says that if you have a situation of Harkava, that does create an exemption. But, but Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says that's not the case. If you have a, situ- a situation of Harkava, that does not create an exemption. Lo Amr Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Hasam Kerem Kemashmo, didn't Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov say that we take the word Kerem like its traditional meaning that it specifically has to be a vineyard? Hachanami here also, Nata Kemashmo. According to Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Nata is taken according to its according to its simple understanding. Notea in the person has to actually plant Mavrich Umarkiv Lo. But if a person is layers the branch, or if a person grafts, so then that does not create the exemption. And again, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov would not follow our Mishnah. And Rashi explains, Rav Nachman, Omer Rav Nachman says, Hadukatani Masnis and Markiv Choser. What was the Mishnah talking about when it said that a case of grafting, the person returns from the war, the person is exempt? That's talking specifically in a scenario. We're talking about when the person grafts a tree onto 
into a Yerik, the low boy Lamhadr Misham Kamo. In that case, he's not able to return from the war because of the Yerik, because the Yerik doesn't exempt from war, and so therefore it's the tree that exempts from war. That is what the Mishnah is talking about. Vim Tomer, now if you're going to ask Min Bishay no Minohu that that is a prohibited kind of grafting, and so therefore that should not exempt him because he's grafting one species onto another. Vimita Allah Harkava Sister, and we already said that if you have Harkava of Isser, that's going to be excluded. As we said, we quoted from the Brisa, Velochilo is to exclude Mavrich and Markov. We made a distinction between a kind of a, a kind of grafting that is Usr and a kind of grafting that is Mutter. And the Gemara says, Hi Tana Hu Da'amar Mutter. So our Mishnah follows the Tana that if you do Elon Biyarik, it's going to be Mutter. Kfarako Ken Shema, the name was Kfarako of that place. Hamani, and then the Gemara gave another answer. Who is the author? Meaning, who's the author in the Brisa? The Katani Pratla Mavrichu Markiv, meaning the Brisa that excludes Mavrich and Markiv. Lav stami. That's not stam. That's not the brisa. That's not just the regular tan of the brisa. Ella seifa de milsa de Rebbe Leizer ben Yaakov. That's actually a continuation of Rebbe Leizer ben Yaakov's words. It's not clear from the brisa again if that's the brisa returning to the original tana or is that a continuation of Rebbe Leizer ben Yaakov. And now the Gemara is saying that's just a continuation of Rebbe Leizer ben Yaakov. Afilo harkavas heter lo hadra lo. It happens to be according to Rebbe Leizer ben Yaakov. Even if you have a grafting that's mutter, that's not going to allow the person to return from the war. And the Gemara continues with other statements in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Kiyosu Rav Dimi Yomar Rav Yochanan. When Rav Dimi came, he said that Rav Yochanan said, Mishum Rav Eliezer ben Yaakov, in the name of Rav Eliezer ben Yaakov, Yalda Pechusu Mitafach. Let's say you have a, a tree that's very small, it's less than a tefach. Chayeves Ba'or Lakol Shinosa. So it's going to be Chayev in Orla all of its years because it appears to be a young tree. The Mishazia Kabashas, it looks like it's a young year old tree. And therefore the Rabbanan say you have to be Machmir and you have to say it's Chayev in Orla. Now that's only in a situation, let's say you have two corresponding to two, meaning in the formation of your orchard, and then you have one other tree that looks like a tail that's in a different form. So therefore that particular tree, it doesn't all look like one set of trees that are all very small. But let's say you have an entire vineyard and they're all small trees, so then call it Isli. So then everybody knows that these trees are much older. It's a larger amount of trees, and in such a situation you don't have to be machmir, you don't have to say that it's chayv in Arla all of its years. And the Gemara continues with another statement in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Kiyosu Rav Dimi Yom Rav Yochanan. When Rav Dimi came, he said that Rav Yochanan said, Mishum Rav Eliezer ben Yaakov, in the name of Rav Eliezer ben Yaakov, Mace, if you have a corpse, Tofes Arba Amos Lekriyashima. So if you're within four Amos of the corpse, so then you're not supposed to recite Kriyashima. Techsiv, as it's written in the Pasuk, Loeg Larosh Cher the person is the person does something which mocks the pauper, it mocks the person that's poor. What it means to say here is a Mace is considered poor in terms of mitzvahs. A dead person is not able to do mitzvahs, and therefore if you're within four amos of the corpse, you're not supposed to say kriyashma. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Rabbi Yitzchak says that Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Chorgesa HaGedela ben Ha'achin, let's say a brothers, they have a stepsister, and she's raised together with the brothers, she appears to be their sister, and she's not allowed to marry those brothers, because it appears that she is that she is their sister. But the Gemara says, Velohi, but that's not actually true. She could marry one of the brothers because Kala is Leila Milsa. Because again, everybody knows, word has went out, everybody knows that this is not their biological sister. And the Gemara continues, And Rabbi Yitzchak says that Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Yitzchak ben Yaakov, Leket shichu peya. let's say you have Leket Shech and Peya. Now in general, Leket Shech and Peya are not Chayv and Meister. However, let's say the poor person who collected the Leket Shech and Peya, he collected so much of it, Shasorn Begor, and he put it in the threshing floor, he piled it up as if it was a normal crop. So then also on a Drabonan level, Hukvula Meister, it's going to be established, you have to take off Meister, it's not going to be exempt from Meister. Amar Ula Ula says, Lo Amar Nela Besada, that's only true in the field. Avol Be'ir, but if this happens in, if this happens in the city, Kala Isle the Milsa. Again, the word goes out, everybody knows that this is really like a Shech and Peya, and it's going to be exempt from Meiser. And the Gemara continues, Viyamar Rabbi Yitzchak, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, and Rabbi Yitzchak says, that Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Yalda ha-pechusa mitafach, again, you have a very small tree, less than a tafach, Eina mekadeshes es hazroim, in a situation of kilayim, which would be a derabonan situation of kilayim, it's not going to create that derabonan kilayim if it's such a small tree. Vahani mi li shtayim, keneged shtayim, v'yachas yotzezonav, again, that's only a situation if you have a small, a small orchard, 
two trees and then another two trees and then another one that's not in the exact same parallel formation. Avol kulei kerem makdash. But if you have an entire vineyard, so then we are going to be machmir. And even if you have a pchusam itafach, even if it's less than a tafach, it's going to create a situation of kilayim. And the Gemara continues, V'yamar Rabbi Yitzchak, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. And Rabbi Yitzchak says that Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. And Rashi explains again, Pechus Mitafach, let's say you have a very small tree less than a tefach, she shuffle koma v'lo tigba liolam atefach. It's never going to grow large. It's always going to be small. Kol sheno se midrabon, it's going to be chayv and orlo. All of its years, this is a chumra midrabon. And kol ayamim orlo no hegespa, you have to treat it like orlo all of its years. The mischaz yikavashos, so it looks like it's a year old. V'haroa sha'ochlin perosa, omer sha'peros. Arla Mutar. People see that you're eating those fruits. They think you're eating the fruits of Arla. And the Gemara said, Kala Isle, but if it's a situation where the entire Kerem looks like that, so then everybody knows it's not an issue. Hakal Omrim Kerem Yesh Laploni Mishunami Kala Kram. Everybody says, everybody knows this guy has a vineyard that's different than normal vineyards. Vyodin, she's the Kena, they know that these are older trees. And Rashi adds, Lahachi Nakachtayim Vachulu. The reason why the Gemara says if you have two trees and two trees that are parallel, and then you have a fifth tree that's like a tail, that's the case where we're Machmer Midrabon and we say it's Chayv and Orla if they're small trees and then if it's a full Kerem again we're lenient but why not just say by one tree we're going to be Machmir the reason is the Savar Lo Command Amr in Mesechus Brachas because here we hold like the Manda Amar that says in Mesechus Brachas Kerem Revoi Tanan Shein Orla Noheges Benetia Achas Ela Bekerem Shalem we hold like the one who says that when it comes to Orla it doesn't apply to just one tree it has to be considered a Kerem and so that's why it says again it's specifically in a situation of Shtayim Keneged Shtayim and then you have one that's a Zon of one that's a tail that that's the case that we're machmir, and we say that you have to treat it. You have to be. You have to treat it as though it's chayiv in arla. And again, in a situation where it's a full karem, so then we are going to be lenient. And Rashi continues, Again, because of loig l'rash, if you're in the proximity of the mace, so he's not allowed to recite kriya shema. Because this guy is reciting kriya shema, and the mace is not able to say kriya shema. Chorgasa Basishto, again, that's the daughter of his wife, that would be their stepsisters. Shagodla Bain Ha'achin Bene Habal Meisha Acheres, again, she's raised together with the other children of the, to, together with the sons of the husband. So we're talking about a situation of a stepsister. People don't realize, and they see that she's raised together with the brothers. So she, they think that this is his sister. So people will think that he married his sister. Again, the case is that the poor person, he gathered so much like a shech and peya that he already made a whole pile as if it was a regular goren. So again, we're machmer and a level that it's chayv and meiser. Somebody sees this, he thinks that he just grew it in his, in his own field. And then the Gemara said, "Vahani mili besad shelo yadu akol she nichnesu maat maat usvur and shagad al sham." Again, if this happens out in the field, so then people don't realize what's going on. Avol beir kol shchein avro shakinas al yad al yad. But if it happens in the city, everybody realizes that he accumulated this slowly. Viyodin shein shaleket shechu peya. They know that it's really coming. That its source is like a shechu and peyu potter min amaiser, and they understand that it's potter from maiser. So there's no problem in such a situation. Ena mekadeshes as azroim. And then we said at the end, if you have a small tree. So it doesn't create a situation of kilayim. Misham kilei akerem dechsebu tikta shamalei hazera. Again, it's not going to be a problem of kilayim in that situation. And Rashi adds, Venir Ali. It appears to me the kasavar kedamin v'menachas that here we're going like the opinion in menachas canvas v'loaf asra Torah that the issue of kilayim on a doraisa level is only by canvas and loaf. Sha'or zuroi midrabon and but all other kinds of plants are only asra midrabon. So we're talking here again, like we said about a dirabon kind of a, of a kilayim. Uvechi aikerem lo gazer rabon and ashar I mean, if you're having a situation where it's such a small, where it's such a small tree, so then we say that it's not going to be a situation of kelayim avol kulei kerem. But if you have a situation where it's an entire vineyard like this, gadol shi shvelas koma, the whole thing, the whole kerem is very small trees. Hoel vechashiva gazrala, since it's already chashiv, so there we would make the gezera and we would be machmir. We will continue with this discussion in the next video. And daf mem dalid amid aleph.